Okay guys, this is video number three, characteristics of a quadratic function. We've been doing a lot of quadratics, of course, so it's a good function to analyze or start out analyzing first. So here we go. So if you look at the first graph here, guys, again, follow the gold here. But there to the left, top left, is the actual function that I typed in on Desmos. And notice how, if I look right there, negative 2 plus 2 would make it 0, correct? So I already know one of the roots, as we call it, is negative 2. And the next parentheses there are factor. Positive 3 would make it 0, correct? So these two numbers, guys, are called the roots of the function. Try to remember that phrase, get used to roots of a function. Another good name for it is zeros of the function. And a final third name is x-intercepts. All three of these names, guys, roots, zeros, and x-intercepts, okay, you can use, you know, at, at the same moment. I mean, uh, how to say it? I'm losing my track, track or thought here. Must be tired, guys. Sorry. But basically, all three words mean the same thing, okay? Now, notice if I go to my function here, follow the red... Right there, notice, is where the negative 2 shows. And over there, notice, that's where the 3 shows. And hopefully I've shown it to you in class enough where you recognize the roots of a graph, for God's sakes. Okay? But anyways, so negative 2 is one of my zeros or roots, so is positive 3. Now, what else should you know is notice the vertex, for example, is right in the middle of my graph. As a matter of fact, it's hard to tell right now, but I'm looking here, and again, I'm just going to do a little math here. If I take negative 2 plus 3 and divide by 2, hopefully you agree that's 1 half. And so that right there, guys, is where the vertex is. And if you follow the green, this is also called our line of symmetry. Our line of symmetry is x equal to positive one-half. Now, in case you forgot what I just did prior to this, that right there I just circled is I just simply average my roots because the middle, the dead middle between my roots is where my axis of symmetry is. It basically splits the parabola in half. Okay? What else should we know? Well, guys, pause the video if you need to. I ask you to pause the video because I'm going to do a little racing. So if you haven't done so, go ahead and pause the video. Okay. So, of course, I didn't pause the video, so you're seeing me erase, but I can talk while I'm doing this. Let me clean it up most I can here. The bottom line is, hopefully you at least now understand the roots, axis symmetry. Also notice, guys, follow the red, Right here is my x-intercept, right? And my x-intercept, notice, is at 0, negative 6. And what I want to point out, guys, is if you don't have the graph, you know how you can find the x-intercept with the function? Just plug in 0. So remember, when you want the intercepts, guys, one rule to remember is plug in 0. You see, 0 plus 2 would be 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 2 times negative 3, of course, is negative 6. So again, by plugging in 0, I was able to find the y-intercept. So again, please remember, plug in 0 to find intercepts. What else can we talk about? Oh, the vertex, which we briefly talked about, is that negative or positive 1 half, right? x equals 1 half. Well, don't forget, because this is the lowest it goes, that would be called a minimum. A minimum. Sorry if I'm a little messy here. But that would be called a minimum, okay? And the only other weird thing they could possibly ask you on a test or quiz would be, hey, what's the domain and range? So follow the gold here. My domain I'm going to refer to as capital D. I hope you understand that capital D is 
the x values input. x is all real numbers in this case and I'll just say all real for short whereas r, big R, the range, you notice there is a limit down here, right? at looks like if I plug in, I'm going to just do it in my head here or just approximate but that minimum right there let me just pause the video and recalculate it real quick okay guys hopefully this video is still working out, I had to do a little quick calculations but the vertex, if I plug one half into my function here, okay, if, follow the gold here, if I actually plugged in one half in there, okay, I would actually get negative 6.25. Negative 6.25. So my vertex is at one half negative 6.25. And the only reason why I want to bring that up is now I know my range, which is my Y, my output values my y has to be greater than or equal to negative 6.25 okay so pause the video if you need to study this a little bit now guys I did set up another one and I'm gonna just go through it really fast so this is definitely a part where you could pause it rewind it if you need to the bottom line is this you ready hopefully you can see if I look at the function here, right here, I already know that my roots or zeros are at negative 2. My roots is at negative 2. And also right here, my root is at, at positive 1. These are my two roots, negative 2 and positive 1. Also note right there, my y-intercept, my y-int is at positive 4. Again, how can we find that y-intercept? Follow the red, plug in zeros and do the math. Negative 2 times 2, because 0 plus 2 is 2, right? Times negative 1, because 0 minus 1 is negative 1. And as you can see, I will get positive 4. And this one is easy to tell, I think. But if we look carefully enough, right here is my axis of symmetry, correct? and it looks like it's at negative one-half this time and if I plug in negative one-half guys I will get the Y coordinate for that vertex notice my vertex also follow the green sorry being messy here but that's my max my maximum value right and so therefore guys um, We'll just end the video right there, but please watch this video more than once. Get used to terms like roots, x-intercept, zeros, y-intercept, uh, max and min, axis of symmetry, and finally, domain and range. Domain is the x's, range are the y output values. Until next time, I'll see you in class, guys.